Hello. I hope all is well. I pray that your day has been a good day. Um, I've had a, a, a mental exhausting day, but nevertheless, I still want to um, greet you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior and uh, let you know that all is well, that I'm praying for you and that it's going to be all right. Um, <clears throat> I talked to you all uh, the other day and I told you that we was going to start the series on race matters. Well, today I want to initiate that uh, by under the title of race matters, but race matters with a subtitle of uh, acceptance and included, because I feel that this is a um, very relevant subject uh, and issue that we're having today as it relates to race and as it relates to black people and um, with how they feel about themselves, their identity and how other people may feel about them. And also with white folks from the standpoint of education, information, uh, to be properly informed. Now, let me, let me, let me preference this or initiate it this way by saying that, um, one, when you go into systematic study or systematic theology, if you want to, if you want to say that it is always going to be approached from a, uh, a juxtaposition that is uh, endearing to the writer, all right? Now, we all believe that um, because it's written in, in scripture and, and just for the sake of clarity, I am not going to go to every scripture. We in the age of technology, so you can go to scripture, you can Google it and figure it all out on, on your own. We are all under the uh, understanding that the word of God was inspired and breathed by the Holy Spirit. The inspiration to all men came by way of the Holy Spirit. And that is true. However, when the Holy Spirit breathed on them, he breathed on people that had already had a predisposition to a certain way of life. Okay. You don't wake up being saved and uh, God removes the identity of who you are. You, you, you get saved, okay? And, and then transformation takes place from a salvific perspective. But um, there are some people that, that are saved, that are theologians that, that come from um, a place of believing that we need slaves. OK, or they possibly they they probably had slave um, um, folks. They, they may have even whipped them and, you know, understood scripture in the New Testament as something that, you know, this is supposed to be You're supposed to be upon the submission of your master and so on and so forth. So there was a pre a predisposition is is where I, is my point. I, I want you to understand all writers will have that. Uh, when I write, I am going to write from my culture. I'm going to write from my experience. I'm going to write from my heart. But ultimately, when God speaks to me, even as he's talking to me now, I am speaking to you out of concern. I'm speaking to you out of my blackness. I'm speaking to you out of my culture. OK, everybody is going to do that. And so from there, we have to be able to navigate through and sift in and out, weave in and out, thread in and out to figure out what is what's good, what's bad. Separate the meat, the bones, the fat, if any, and um, what's going to be inspirational, what's going to be applicable, what what is going to be helpful for my situation. So we talked about the last time the Vulgate. I, I, I told you all that um, and I and I miss said it because I was so tired. I'm tired today too, but I'm here anyway. I said that uh, in the book of the Song of Solomon that um, the first chapter um, verses one through four, I said the last time it was a picture of the church, but I, I was tired. The, it is a picture of Christ, verses one through four. 
Uh, verses five is a picture of the church it, and it talks about um, uh, Solomon's wife and she and she gives an explanation or she gives an excuse or she apologizes for who she is. So the first five verses, uh, it basically talks about the, 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 the place, the uh, Christ's position from on high. Then you get into verse five, and now we're talking about the church, which we can also say the church slash black people. Um, because now we are a type, it is a type of, so let's contrast that or liken it to this or that. So now we have this woman, she makes apology according to the Vulgate Bible, which was written in um, early, um, maybe fourth or fifth century, could have been the third century by a gentleman named St. Joseph. OK, now he's writing this again. Remember, I said that the word of God is the inspiration. It is inspired. Now, when there's a translation, because he got he is from probably the Septuagint. Uh, I'm not sure the Hebrew they were they were. Excuse me, text that was written prior to the Hebrew text is the one that we that is so pronounced today. Uh, and then you have the Septuagint, which is a translation of the Hebrew into Greek. All right. However, it is that when there's a writer or somebody that's that's putting uh, ink to paper, they have the liberty. They have the liberty to express that in a way that they feel is correct or appropriate for whatever agenda that they may have. All right. So. So now uh, when we look at this in the Vulgate Bible in verse number five, it says that um, the Solomon's wife, she says, for I am black. And the son, I apologize for this part. The son has discolored me. Now, the other two translations or Bibles do not say that. It says, for I am black. Uh, and I am black and I am comely or I am beautiful. Now, three authorities, two authorities um, are authorities that would lift up a, a, a people. And then there's one that would question, understand. Now we're getting ready to get into uh, systematic progression of a a mindset and a design to put people into a certain environment a certain place uh to stereotype to make you believe a certain way so we have two that has the writing of lifting somebody up now just 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 think about it the Bible says that Christ is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. If he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, then why would a writer say that um, for I am black and it's all going to go back to black people, right? It's going to all go back to black people because she was a black woman. I am black, a picture of the church, but I am black and the sun has discolored me. Now, when, when you say, when you make a statement like that, what you were saying is that I am black, but I'm messed up. Now, who told you that? Who told you that the color of your skin, the size of your nose, your lips and all that stuff was messed up? It was written. Now, watch this. OK, so you have those three authorities right there that we are um, living by. Uh, at least we should be living by. But watch so you have the Vulgate, which is given and is something that the Roman Catholics, Catholics back in that time, during that time, uh, that they that they had at their their disposal. And so this was a the a popular Bible that they was reading. But now I'm watching because I'm going to answer some questions that was um, 
that was uh, presented to me. And one of those questions was, should black people submit to authority? But well, I'm going to show you something, but I'm going to come back to that because I want to answer that question in the New Testament. So I'm not going to deal with that today, but I want to just give you a little something to have you give you something to think about. So we got the Vulgate and y'all know the Roman Catholic Church, right? So all this stuff is over in Europe. So now this is what they supposed to live by, or this is what's supposed to edify them. This is the church. But watch this. The Pope does not submit to the authority. And I'm not going to say all the Vulgate was, was wrong. I'm just going to say that there's parts in it where people possibly diluted for whatever their agenda may have been, but I'm sure that was, there's a whole lot, and there is a whole lot in there that's good that we can live by, that we can all be edified by. But for the most part, whenever there's an agenda, just like when you get into a Colossians and Ephesians 5 and all that, where it starts talking about, you know, masters and uh, submitting to authority and all that, at this point, you have to understand the culture. Because if greed and money is at the root of it, then I got to make sure that this sounds, uh, it, it fits, it fits and it's formed in such a way that this ain't gonna mess up my money. So I, if this is going to help me to continue to stay on top and to, um, 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 feed into my ego and all those other things that go along with, you, you know, basically it's fear and intimidation of whatever it may be, um, then, then that becomes that becomes an issue. OK, so let's look at this. We got the pope and the pope now, because back then what would happen was whatever the pope said. So if the pope said your sins are forgiven, your sins were forgiven. The Pope will give a mandate to the bishops. The bishops would then give it to the priests. The people would come. They would get in front of the little window and they would say, you know, for I have done what you, what you call it. We'll give you so many Hail Marys and your sins are forgiven. OK, now they didn't they didn't get up. They didn't read the Bible. They, they had it, but they didn't read it. So, so when you talk about authority, okay, where was the Pope's authority as it relates to the written word of God? Even though the written word of God was uh, distorted a little bit, because we're going to get into, uh, into uh, racism and why black people may be pushing back, okay? But now ain't nobody going to say nothing about the Pope back then in the Roman Catholic Church, when the Pope pushed back, when it, when what they went by was not the word of God. They just went by the authority. The Pope was the authority. In other words, the Pope was God. All right. Now watch. We're looking at how this whole thing travels and it and it and it migrates through uh, Europe, Germany, all those Eurocentric areas. Um, where we start to look at, we get the church out of England and all, it's all kind of churches that, that birth out of that. Even from there, the, um, the, the, from the Roman Catholic church, you have Luther and Calvin's and all them that they come about with the reformation because when the reformation came about, Luther said, wait a minute, something ain't right about this. Okay. And this was the Vulgate. And this was the Roman Catholics way of Christianity. Luther says something ain't right about this. So as he uh, continues to to dismantle this whole thing, because it was an issue of of priesthood and who could come to the priest, who could be for, forgiven. Luther, Luther said, listen, I believe that we we all have a measure of of priesthood in us. So we all should be able to come to God. And that's how that whole Reformation thing came about. And that's where you get, you start getting the uh, Protestant 
uh, denomination and so on and so forth. There was a whole lot of denominations that that evolved and came around to Western civilization uh, as as time went on. But 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 I'm here. I'm trying to make a point to you. So now when we we're still over in Europe and we and we have some some other um, notable um, men, scholars, theologians that a lot of us today and I'm talking about even in uh, the African-American pulpits that we are going by and uh, we we ain't real red. OK, I'll just say it like that. But but we're living under let's case in point. Um, there's two schools of thoughts and that I'm going to make mention of. There's more, but I'm going to make of two make mention of two of them that is very familiar. And some of y'all are, are, are up under it and you don't even know where it came from. See, this is how this whole thing comes about, because like if if you walking around and you thinking that you ugly and that the sun discolored you or that your forehead is is the wrong size or your nose is too big and all that. And you ain't never read the Vulgate or you ain't never read something that uh, diminished you, minimized you into nothing. Then who told you? And 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 what it 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 perpetuates itself down through the generations into your your mind and your heart because it's being fed into different directions. And by the time that thing gets so saturated, after a while, folks be walking around and they say, "Well, you know, you got nappy hair, and you know you you know you ugly, and you you too dark." Even with black people. Um, you can only be so dark now. All right. Now I'm telling you, this is pronounced amongst us. Okay. And then, then they tell you, you know, don't have no ugly baby. Okay. You go watch who you lay down with because you know, both of y'all, both of y'all dark and you know, both of y'all, the way y'all look and everything that, you know, that put that whole thing together and that that's going to make for, that's a bad recipe right there. Right. Okay. So it's coming around. Somebody's talking to you. And eventually it's going to be in a whole lot of different homes. And now this becomes a reality. It becomes a way of life. It becomes a way of thinking. This becomes systemic. All right. You have two schools of thought. The first school of thought comes out of uh, a, from a German theologian by the name of Karl Barth. Karl Barth, Barth believed in the Bible. And he preached and his his um, his conviction was the Bible only. Jesus, let's just preach Jesus. And how many of us in the pulpit right now? I talk to a whole lot of people and they say, just preach Jesus, just preach Jesus, just preach Jesus. That'll satisfy. But and I ain't got time to get into all this. But but when Jesus came Jesus, when you look at Matthew 25 and when Jesus, when he talks about uh, the spirit of the Lord has come upon me. OK, to do what and to preach to who uh, all that he, he came for the disenfranchised. All right. He, he, he didn't when he, if he come from di disenfranchised, you are going to preach Jesus. But if you didn't, you don't include poor people. In that, then we missing something. So we we got to ask something to Jesus, not that Jesus needs something, but from an understanding standpoint, it's got to be more to it than just I preach Jesus, because we preach Jesus. We still uh, we still don't know how to connect the dots. All right. Got to keep going. I only got a few more minutes. The next school of thought was um, Paul Tillich. Paul Tillich came around and he argued against Barth's theology. And he said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just can't preach Jesus without preaching culture. So he said, I'm with you on this, Carl. I'm with you with this right here. We do need to preach Jesus because this is what it's all about. It's got to be Christ centered. But but Tillich said, let's take a little bit further. He says, let's preach Jesus with the culture. Why am I saying that? Because when Barth got his revelation and he was teaching it, he was teaching it from a perspective that was absent 
of the experience of black people. Black people was around, but they were not they were not noticed in a positive light. So in other words, just think about it. Just think about it. Y'all Google, do your own research on it. the reason why we're in a situation right now because we don't read. OK, so 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 now Barth is saying, I'm just going to do it from this perspective. Preach Jesus. Well, for the most part, when you look at white people, everything is, is fine in their world. So you, let's preach Jesus. I'm, I'm sure that we can just preach Jesus when everything is good. Usually, you know, you, you can send your kids to pretty good schools. You got good jobs, food on your table. Everything is going fairly well. And I'm saying there's there's exceptions to white privilege. There, there, there are some white folks are oppressed as well. I'm not saying that. And please, as you listen to this, I am not trying to pit one race against the other race. I am trying to to encourage black folks and educate white folks so that we all may come together because the disparity here is that uh, it seems to be that white folks think they better than black folks. And I'm going to even get into that because there's been studies that if we all given equal, equal everything that you put black here, white there, and you put them in the same environments. At the end of the day, they all come out at the same at the same spot. What has happened is that it, 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 there's there's been some things that have been stripped and taken away, and all all kind of stuff. So anyway, Carl has this ideology. Paul Tillich comes along with another one because he's saying that's not going to work. He says that you're going to have to incorporate culture. In other words, what's going on during the time of the people that what's going on during the time they live? How are they thinking? What 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 um, um, what is the situation of the day? Is it is there war? Is it peace? Uh, all that stuff, you know, we, ha we, we have to take in that in, in consideration culture. However, I don't ascribe to Tillich or Barth. You know why? Because when Tillich included culture, he did not include black culture. All right. I'm trying I'm trying to show you something. All right. He did include culture, but understand it's 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 Euro. It's it's over. It's Eurocentric. And it's coming this way. So they ain't ready to embrace black people. They, they were denouncing blacks. All right. Blacks didn't have no place in, you know, it ain't been no place in the Bible. None of we, we fighting all this stuff now. Like we ain't nothing. No existence. No voice. No presence. No nothing in the Bible. You know, I, I, I don't mean that literally, but for the most part, it's true. OK, and we've had to fight that for a long time. We just now come into a place where we can have a conversation. And that's that that is a spinoff of per, possibly Black Lives Matter and all the the the, uh, the racial tension that we have. And I don't mean I'm an advocate for Black Lives Matter, uh, but that's another story. But but we just now because of so much tension in the land and the issue that happened with George Floyd is bringing us at, at this point. Now, this has been 400 plus years of oppression. Over 50 years since Martin Luther King died. And now it takes this. And, and, and at this point now, white folks are saying, well. What happened? What did we do? Let's talk about it. You know, some of them, some of them still resisting, saying, you know what? Forget them. You're still showing on TV where they um, have little captions of a, a, a white person putting their foot on somebody, you know, making making fun of it and all that. That's 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 craziness. That's craziness. So so this thing here and I got 24 minutes it's uh I, I am here today to just tell you briefly and I'll come back and I'll add to this this is we'll get into uh acceptance and um included I, I need to understand that I'm accepted 
I need to be accepted. I need to accept myself and I need to be included because I was included. All right. I, I am. I am not a third. I am not two thirds. I'm not a monkey, not a third, two thirds human, all that kind of stuff that that we have been depicted to be. Um, man, I might have to cut this. I got to cut this short because if I don't, I'll start my next subject and it's going to cut off on me. I don't know yet, y'all, how to um, uh, how to do all this stuff with YouTube and and uh, Facebook and all that. So I'm learning it at this point. Anything over 30 minutes, I it, it shuts off on me, and I, my my mind will be going and cut me off in midstream, and then I got to figure out where I left off at. So what I'm going to do is hopefully. You all got a little something out of this. It's the first one to race matters. And um, this one deals with acceptance and in, in being in, included. And I hope that you glean something from this. Uh, and I hope I made sense with trying to uh, paint a trajectory of where we we were where everything came from and how it was coming back around to make it fit full circle uh and and what happened at the end of the day i i, I am a preacher of peace but we can't just preach peace and say ain't nothing wrong it's something wrong okay so i ain't no sense in me cover my eyes because people are are, are still dealing with stuff out in the street we're still dealing with uh, disparities as it relates to um, economics and um, um, jobs, you know, equity, the things that are fair and equitable across the board. We're still dealing with that. Uh, we're dealing with lower percentages. I forget what it was. I think it's 15 percent. Blacks make up 15 percent of uh america so it should be 15 percent ceos it should be 15 percent wealth it should be 15 percent of a whole lot and what I, and when i say that generically 15 percent it may be a little lower than that but the representation should be much higher than what it is right now as opposed to uh the representation of uh, of other uh, nationalities all right so uh we have some work to do and uh, I'm, I'm just here to try to help us get some of that work done. I hope that this uh, first lesson uh, has been um, enlightening for you. I, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I'm just putting the facts out there. Please fact check me if you would like. Uh, if I said anything that was wrong, charge it to my head and not to my heart. I don't mean nothing bad by I love all people, white people, red people, brown people, burgundy people. If you are a person, I love you. I just want us to get along. I want us to love each other. I want us to, to live in peace and I want us to understand and I want us to be informed and, and informed properly. Not with all the lies and not with all the manipulation. Not with all the things that would suggest to us to to uh, to perpetuate this ideology of that we're nobody. That's not right. That's not right. OK, I'm tired. Um, I don't think I'm going to say any more tonight, going to get on here anymore tonight. Uh, be blessed. I will come back. I, I am going to answer your questions. I may answer the questions as I navigate through this, or I may just answer them all at one time. I don't know, but um, it, we, we coming. Okay. God bless you. It's face-to-face -face ministries and um, I love you. It ain't nothing that you can do about it. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. God bless.